Thank you, organizers, for this opportunity. This was a 50-year-old male treated with knee brace for three weeks as soft tissue injury. He continued to get pain and limp. Later on, good quality x-rays revealed a half a fracture of the medial femoral condyle, was treated by medial savastus approach, open reduction, leg plated. Three years down the line, he has become absolutely normal. This is not an uncommon scenario. Remember that 40% of the distal femur fracture have hoffas. Unfortunately, one third of them are missed on the X-rays. Hoffas, they lack a good classification and lack consensus for ideal treatment. That's why we should be discussing them. Hoffa fracture is a coronal split of the posterior femoral condyle caused by a high energy trauma, direct impact with the knee flex as shown on this drawing leads to a Hoffa fracture. If hip is abducted at the time of injury, you get a lateral one. If hip is adducted, you get a medial one. You must look for other injuries to hip and pelvis in all these patients. 80% of the times you get lateral condylar Hoffa, 9% involves both condyles, and 11% medial condyle. Open fractures are three times more likely to have Hoffa element. We tend to miss them on x-rays often because on the AP view, fracture line is obscured. Why it's gone? No, I have not done anything. Yeah. Fracture line is obscured by intact anterior cortex. On the lateral view, you may or may not see a break in the cortex. Oblique views are best, but ideal is to order a CT scan at the slightest hint of suspicion, which can show number of fragments, any depressed articular fragments, and can help to decide the right approach and right implant even. Comminuted fractures use of plate is mandatory, while non-comminuted fractures can be treated by headless compression screw, as we did in this adolescent patients. MRI can show you ligamentous avulsion, chondral, and meniscal injuries. PCL avulsion would have certainly been mis missed in this doctor if he had not ordered an MRI. Excellent classification given by Dr. Bagaria and Chandak. Type 1, where fracture line passes parallel and close to the posterior femoral cortex. Half a fragment is more than 2.5 centimeter, and you can easily leg it with AP leg screws by parapetal approach. Type 2, where fracture line passes much behind the posterior femoral cortex. Fragment is less than 1 inch, and you ought to use posterior anterior leg screws on the medial side by subastus and on lateral by swashbuckler approach. Type 3, hoffas are rare fractures, comminuted ones, and use of plates is mandatory along with leg screws. This 65-year-old female was treated by medial subastus approach. Remember that while fixing a Hoffa element on the medial femoral condyle, leg screw has to start in the trochlear groove because the medial cortex of the femur slopes 25 degree outward. Temporary K wires later on replaced with leg screws, void packed with bone grafts, buttressed with LCP, and three years down the line, this old lady has become absolutely normal. My plea to you is treat Hoffa fractures like a TBL condyle, elevate, graft, leg, buttress, and mobilize on day one. If the Hoffa fragment is large, you can use AP screws which are easy to pass. They cause less soft tissue dissection and no risk of neurovascular injury. However, if the fragment is small, AP screws can cause distraction at the fracture site because threads may not cross at all or screws may miss the fragment entirely. Here you have to use PA screws which are biomechanically superior. Don't forget to recess all screw heads beneath the articular cartilage. 6.5 leg screws are not to be used. A small fragment of the Hoffa can get splintered by them. They cause more damage to articular surface. Remember that the compression achieved by a leg screw doesn't depend on its size. It depends on how well you execute your leg screw. I always use 3.5 leg screws which achieve excellent compression without risk of splintering the fragment, cause less damage to articular cartilage. I can pass two or three screws in different direction to get rotational stability and still have enough room to buttress with a plate. Headless compression screw achieve great axial compression, no need to countersink and no soft tissue irritation. Keep a variety of them up to 55 centimeter lengths. Plate is mandatory for comminuted fractures, obese patient, osteoporotics, fractures with depressed articular fragments, and fractures with metaphyseal extension because the screws alone can't cope with shear forces. Posterior antiglide plate strips more soft tissue around the fracture and damages blood supply to fracture fragment, don't be obsessed with it. 
Lateral anti-glide plate has greater anti-shearing strength than posterior plate and is my favorite. This young girl was treated with screws like this, plastered for six weeks, had 20 degree of FFD and only 70 degree of flexion. CT shows that screw have missed the fragment and the passing through the intercondylar notch. We did an open reduction. HOFA has two parts, articular congruity, restored, lag, plated, and four years down the line, she is a state level Kabaddi player. 45 year old male, same story, no leg screws for the HOFA, plate missed the HOFA element, element entirely, screws in the intercondylar notch. I do my revisions in the lateral position, release quadriceps, even achieve full flexion even before removing the implant, mark the apex and base of intraarticular osteotomy with K wires, osteotomy, osteotomy done. Remove a wedge of bone proximally, pull the hoffa proximally and push it up with a periosteum from below, clamp it, leg it, plate it, and same day evening, nine months follow up, and that's his function. 20 year old boy, same story, plate has missed the hoffa element, osteotomy done, reconstruction and date in, he has got almost 100 degree of flexion. Young patient, lateral femoral hoffa, fixed only with leg screws. Six months down the line, fracture has not united, a stiff knee, 20 degree of flexion. I wanted to reconstruct it, but found low grade infections, hence curated out the fracture, removed the implants, did an arthrolysis and quadriceps plasty. 15 years, nothing more is required and he is still doing great. You can have all sort of complications, delayed union, non-union, AVN, screw back out, loss of reduction due to shear forces during flexion and extension, and post-traumatic arthritis if you don't treat them well. Hoffas are often missed. You should have a high index of suspicion, in, especially in compound fractures of distal femur. CT is mandatory. MRI might improve your end result. Workhorse approaches you should be familiar with. Use only 3.5 leg screws. A small fragment, neat PA screws, you should learn to pass them. Headless compression screw may be your severe at times. Keep a variety of them. Comminuted fractures always need plating. Lateral plating is better than the posterior one. Achieve a fixation which will allow you to mobilize on day zero. And treatment of neglected hoffas is difficult, challenging, but extremely rewarding. Don't shun them off. Thank you very much.